Hello, you all. Welcome back to my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, what's good? If you are new, hey, boo. I am back with another video. <laughs> and let me just say happy Friday to you all. I know y'all looking at me. I know y'all looking at them edits like, no, she didn't. Not the temptations, though. <laughs> but no, actually, when I was thinking about the movie, that quote from that movie just jumped out at me like, Ain't no one man bigger than this group. Now you remember that, okay? And I'm like, you know what? I hear a message in that. And I know you probably thinking like, girl, I'm finna go watch The Temptations now. <laughs> Temptations is my all time favorite movie. And out of that movie, that scene just jumped out at me like, ain't no one man bigger than this group. Now you remember that, okay? Blue was my favorite character from that movie. And I'm gonna tell y'all why, okay? Blue was real mellow. He was real kind of like, he chill. He quiet. He ain't really in a mix. He ain't doing too much. He the peacemaker. He always bringing everybody together whenever it was strife in the group. And he had to put his foot down in this scene. I think that was the only time in this movie where he really came into character throughout this entire movie. But it's a lot of people out here that is acting like David Ruffin. On your walk with Christ, you are going to start to notice and I know you like, girl, no, she did not with the David Ruff in that. It's going to make a lot of sense, y'all, okay? You are going to start to notice on your walk with Christ that it's going to be a lot of people out here that is going to be acting like they are David Ruffin. David Ruffin was a great singer, great performer, all of that. He was multi-talented. He was a great addition to the group, but he thought he was better than everybody in the group, okay? He thought that he was the one that made them be successful okay he wasn't working together as no team all he saw was himself the one thing you are going to notice it's going to make a lot of sense the way i'm going to say this it's a lot of people out here that's professing the lord name these people are in leadership positions in the body of christ these may be people that have started out on their walk of christ and they were on fire for the lord but somewhere along the way and i have spoken about this on my channel before when I talked about idolatry and things like that. Okay, I'm going to go into one of the Ten Commandments. And one of those Ten Commandments was, Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. And so you're going to have some people out here that are going to be acting like they are David Ruffin. Okay? They are going to be acting like they are God in a sense. They are going to feel as though they have the keys to the heaven gates. Okay? The only way you are going to be able to get through to the Lord and have a connection with the Lord is through them, okay? You are going to start to notice that some people are going to be coming very big-headed, very arrogant. You are going to see that a lot on your walk with Christ. You are going to start to notice that as you evolve spiritually and grow closer with the Lord, you are going to see so many different people that is going to be carrying this spirit like David Ruffin. The Lord is going to step in front of everybody way. He is going to come out the woodworks and be like, wait a minute. Ain't no one man bigger than me, okay? I am the Lord, your God. You are not to have any gods before me. The Lord going to have to check so many different people if he not doing it already. And there was a reason why I use this movie as a perfect topic because it's called The Temptations, okay? You are going to be presented with so many different temptations on your walk with Christ. You are going to be tempted to fall up off your walk with Christ. You are going to be tempted to engage in so many different behaviors now if y'all go watch the movie temptation it's tons of spiritual messages within that movie and you can tell that a lot of them was dealing with some heavy can of temptation paul was dealing with a spirit of alcoholism some of them was battling with just so many different things okay things that was very unholy that's why the movie was called temptations and so that is what you are going to notice on your walk with Christ. These people in these hat positions, they are going to be tempting you to backtrack on your walk with Christ because they didn't get so arrogant in a position that they hold in the body of Christ. To the point to where they are going to be pushing more people away from the Lord instead of drawing more people closer to him. You're going to get an ultimatum from the Lord, okay? He's going to be telling you it's either them or it's me. Ain't no one man bigger than me. Okay, I'm sticking to that quote that Blue said. 
if somebody is coming and bringing something to you and they are acting as though they are higher than the Lord, they're basically placing themselves in a position as if they are some sort of God or goddess or something like that, then that's a problem, okay? You should always be giving praises and glory to the most high, everything. We all know that we make mistakes sometimes. That's going to happen. That's normal. But you should always be coming and giving praises and glory to the most high. You should never hold yourself higher than the Lord in no capacity. It don't matter how much spiritual knowledge you have. It don't matter how many gifts that you have. You still have to give glory and praise to the most high and people be underestimating the power of the Lord when it comes to situations like this this is quick as he gave it to you he would take it away okay the Lord give it and he take it away okay so he can snatch them gifts away from you real quick when you start to get to hound your horses all of us are going to be tested when it comes to the Lord the Lord is going to come firm and strong it's so many different levels of deception out here when it comes to the spiritual warfare you are going to notice it okay it's just going to be kind of like when you're watching a movie temptations it's going to be kind of like that you are going to be going up against so much and i don't know why i just thought about paul but paul was really pure hearted in the beginning of the movie if you really watch it he was the one that had strong leadership skills he was basically like the strength of the group in a sense too a lot of them carried a certain level of leadership within a group okay and that's what it comes to with people in the body of christ when they hold certain leadership positions if you don't stick together eventually things are going to fall apart and i keep seeing this whole thing within the body of christ it seems as though people are trying to tell other people down trying to get to the top they just kind of just thinking about themselves it's not really about the lord they hard ain't on fire for the lord it seems as though they are trying to see who is better than who it's just kind of like the movie temptations okay and I'm just going to kind of bring it back to Paul. I feel like the reason why Paul had so much of a big role in character in that movie is because he was one of the strongest ones in the beginning. You know how they started out. He was always on fire, you know, just ready for rehearsal. He's singing. He had one of the strongest voices, too. He was just very energetic. And that's what strengthened the group. And I just seen where slowly but surely he started getting tempted by the devil. OK, David Ruffin basically depicted Satan in this movie. He was a perfect example of deception for this group okay they didn't see it in the beginning the first performance he had with them the deception was there he was already who he was in the beginning when deception is presented to you it's going to be coming in a form is if this person ain't going to have no care they are going to basically show you who they are in the beginning and it's up to you to choose whether you're going to rock and roll with them or not he basically played on their desperation for a new lead singer because remember they had lost al Okay, he had a drinking problem and they let him go because he was too much of a hothead. And then David seen that as an opportunity. He seen that as a weakness and a vulnerability. And so he played on them. He gave them this sob story about his past. Okay, that's how he was able to reel them in through emotions. He told them in the beginning, he was like, I don't do too well with rules. So basically he told you right there that he was going to be a problem later on down the road. So he basically already showed them his character in the beginning. They was just blindsided by his voice. That's what reeled them in. But I just thought back to the scene to where Paul, it seemed like he had his morals right. All of them in a group had their morals together. But David came in a group and planted seeds of corruption within a group. Okay, and that's what caused strife and division. And so them scenes with Paul was always said to me because that scene from when they was on the bus and he was drinking milk and then David tried to offer him some liquor and he turned it down the first time. And I just knew that was right then and there that was gonna be some trouble. David basically brought corruption within a group. I always wonder why David offered him a drink out of everybody. Okay, that was always the scene that just kind of stood out to me. I was just sitting up there thinking like, that's how it is. The devil will always try to test your strength. Paul was one of the strongest ones in the group and David knew that. So he knew the only way he was going to be able to break him spiritually is by weakening him with alcohol. If you really pay close attention to the movie, he corrupted Eddie into doing drugs. David was partaking in so much corruptive behavior throughout the movie okay sex drugs all of that type of stuff he brought all that corruption within the group remember in the beginning of the movie they was going to church they was living a very purified kind of lifestyle until he came within a group david was like that apple up on the tree okay he was the one that was tempting eve and adam to eat from that tree that's basically how david presented himself to the group and so 
throughout the movie, you started to see where Paul slowly started to deteriorate. He started to lose his mojo. He ain't had the draft like he once did in the beginning of the group. The reason why I keep on talking about Paul and why it's so sad to me is because that relates so much to what you are going to notice on your walk with Christ with people. You are gonna be tempted to go against things that you believe in. Your morality is gonna be constantly tested on your walk with Christ, especially when it comes to drugs and alcohol. You are gonna start to notice that either with yourself or with other people, you are gonna see that people are becoming weak on their walk with Christ. And it's just sad just to sit up and think about it because Paul was one of the strongest members of the group. And he let Satan tempt him into a life of corruption with drugs and alcohol. And so that's just kind of how it is. Like when you don't see deception right in front of you, that's going to be a recipe for a disaster. And see, that's the one thing about deception. It looks good. It sounds good in the beginning. But then slowly but surely, you are going to start to see this person's mask fall off. Okay, they ain't going to be able to put up no mask for too long. It was a couple of scenes in a movie where they showed David Ruffin. And he always had this mischievous, evil kind of facial expression on his face it was like either a green he was basically satan in that movie <laughs> for real and i just literally thought about that scene when they were supposed to meet up at the park and he came with his girlfriend and otis was the narrator of the movie basically but he was just saying that david started becoming a person that none of us recognized okay that's when it settled in for him he started seeing everything unfold before his ass it was almost as if like dang we've been deceived we didn't bit off more than we can chew with this situation. We thought we had a good leader, a good singer, but really he is becoming a big problem to this group. It was a couple of scenes within a move that I'm going to hone in on that I took a spiritual lesson from. The one scene where Eddie had showed up to David apartment and he was just basically telling him, like, why you ain't answering the phone? That scene was so sad to me because... It's just so crazy how drugs will just ruin your life. It can ruin a gift. They had the gift and the talents of singing and performing. And they basically let Satan take them all down one by one, in a sense. Otis and Blue was the only two that was really strong throughout this movie. And Blue was struggling with a few things in the movie too, but I'm gonna probably get on to that later on in the video. But that scene when Eddie had came to David's house, that scene kind of bothered me because I always thought Eddie had a beautiful voice. He was one of the strongest leaders of the group as well. And just to see how they just let temptation, let them fall like that was just man boggling to me. He literally took them drugs and snorted it up his nose. And I was just like, oh my God. Out of everybody in the group, I thought that Eddie was going to be the one that was going to be able to beat the temptation. But he felt pray to it as well because y'all remember the scene where and for the people who ain't seen the movie i'm sorry it was too many spoiler alerts up in this movie but the temptations is an old movie like i'm pretty sure everybody in their mom didn't that movie but y'all remember the scene to where they was going to get rid of david they basically wrote him a letter and told him look you've been a problem to this group and we didn't already came up on the decision that we are going to let go that scene was crazy to me because eddie didn't really want him to leave. It was crazy. Eddie had some sort of attachment to David. I never really quite understood. Well, I knew the reason why Eddie didn't want him to leave because he had a good voice. And he was a great performer. Let's just be honest. David was a great performer. He was a great addition to the group. But Eddie didn't see what everybody else saw. He just seemed, okay, he is the person that's a part of the group. We making his money. We doing this together. So even though he may be a bit of a problem, we still got to make this money. That's how Eddie seemed it. But it was one particular scene. I seen this movie when I was a child. Even seeing that scene when Paul turned his head away from the group, that was a chilling scene to me because that was just basically the beginning of his downfall. In a sense, it's just kind of like, dang for one fallen man because they was all looking towards him you know they was letting him go they basically standing as a group it, it was so much of a symbolic spiritual meaning behind that scene when they was letting david go they was all on board with letting him go but paul wasn't that's why he looked away from the group okay and so it was just so many different spiritual lessons 
um, from that movie. That scene where Eddie was doing them drugs, that scene bothered me too. It was actually a couple of scenes from in a movie with David that bothered me. It was the scene where he had met up with that drug dealer at the house and he told the drug dealer that he was going to sell his car. And he was so high and doped up off of drugs, he didn't even realize that he had missed an important show that they were supposed to do together. And it's so crazy how drugs literally take over. This movie touched me so much, y'all, because I have seen so many people battle with drug addictions throughout my life. You know, I think I had shared with y'all on my channel that my mother had a drug addiction, but that's why this movie touched me so much and why I like the movie so much. But that's what happens when you let drugs get to you, that tempt you to down the life of corruption. And you can see how the temptation destroyed all of them one by one. The part with David was said, too, because... They had so much talent, but they let the drugs tempt them and they ended up losing out on a lot in the process. And it was so crazy because Otis and Blue was the only two that was really standing strong throughout the entire movie. They started out the movie together and they ended the movie together. The scene where Blue had that, every time that scene come on, I cry like a baby. They played their character and they parts perfectly in their movie, but... Every time I see that scene, I cry like a baby out. When he died, that was just so sad. Blue, even though he was the most mellow, quiet one out of the group, he was a strong addition to the group as well because he was the one that always kept everybody level-headed. He was kind of like the glue to the group in a sense. When it came to trying to keep everybody together. He just always seemed to be the one that was always trying to have unity within a group. And that's a strong leadership quality, peace and tranquility. That's what he was all about. Y'all remember in the beginning of the movie where Paul and Eddie really didn't want to team up with Otis and Al in blue. And he basically brought them together in a sense. They didn't really want to work together, but he ended up bringing them together. Keeping everybody in line. Otis played that part too. I feel like that's why they were best friends in a movie because they had a lot of the same qualities. And just that scene with Blue, that was so sad because it was a few scenes throughout the movie to where they didn't really take Blue too seriously because he was always the one. They never did seem to have a voice. You know, he never really kind of spoke up himself. They looked at him like he was Otis, yes me. They really didn't show any sort of respect for Blue throughout that movie, but he definitely held his leadership role in that movie. They all were leaders. When he died, that stuff broke my heart, y'all, yeah, for real. Sometimes when that scene come on, I can't even watch it. And that scene was so sad. I kinda wanted to sum this video up by talking about Otis. I can't talk about Paul's death. That was too sad for me. When I started this video, I wasn't even, planning on doing a breakdown of this entire movie, but it seemed like that's the route it took. I guess I should just throw it in here since I done basically talked about everything else. But Paul's death was just a prime example of what happens when you let alcohol take control over your life. Okay. I got so much of a personal connection to that scene because I have seen so many people in my life battle with alcoholism. And that's why his role in that movie just kind of touched me so much why he stood out so much. But that's just basically what happens when you let alcohol take over your life. You lose control over everything. You end up losing it. He ended up taking his life. And that was just a scene that will always haunt me for the rest of my life. Like he was literally in a dark parking lot by himself with nobody. That scene was very chilling to me. And he just left behind his kids and his wife and alcohol literally destroy his life. That's what happens when you let Satan take over. You end up losing it. Okay, man lost his man to the point to where he just couldn't even take it no more. He ended up taking his cell phone out. It's so many spiritual lessons you could take from watching that movie. I know y'all probably gonna go watch the movie, but I'm pretty sure you're not gonna see the movie the same. You are gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. You are gonna see so many different spiritual lessons within that movie and it's gonna correlate to the Lord is going to correlate with your walk with Christ. Like you cannot fall prey to temptation. That's what's going to happen to your life. Your life is going to slowly start to deteriorate when you don't stay firm on your walk with Christ. And when you don't stand firm with the Lord, you don't pray to him. He is your strength. He is your friend. He is your confidant. Okay. That what we be doing something to me. Yeah. I ain't going to even lie. But 
I just want to sum this movie up by talking about Otis. Otis was the leader of the group. He was the one that basically came out on top out of this entire situation. He was basically the last man standing. So the scene that really got me about Otis was, even though he was the strongest one in the group, he always seemed to be the one that was level-headed in the sense, but at the same token time, he was kind of like a high head too, a little bit, because he had to, that's why he had Blue on his side. But Blue was the one that kind of kept him mellow. But that scene where he had lost his son, that touched me a lot. That was the first time I had seen Otis be emotional in the movie. He just always seemed to be just real, just straightforward, just kind of like very stern. You got to do this. You got to do that. There was no emotion in him through that movie. He was trying to be that leader, so he didn't show no vulnerability at all. But that scene when he lost his son, that really touched me for real. I'm just going to end it like that. But basically to sum this video up, you are going to be faced with so many different sensations on your walk with Christ. And as long as you stay firm with him, you are not going to go wrong. There's going to be so many different things you are going to encounter on your walk with Christ with so many different people, people in the body of Christ, people in your personal life, friends, family, all that type of stuff. There's going to be so many different types of temptation that is going to try to come and detour you from your walk with Christ. And it's all designed for a reason. Basically, the way I'm going to sum up this video is how strong is your relationship with the Lord? Do you have a strong enough relationship with the Lord to the point where you know how to turn down temptation? You know how to walk away with no problem, okay? I'm the type of person that when I watch certain movies and things like that, I literally take a lesson from it, even though I know that they are just acting this out. But that's a true story. And so... I take everything as a lesson. Basically, what I wanted to leave on y'all heart tonight is how well are you able to resist temptation when it comes to having this relationship with the Lord? Are you willing to walk this walk with him boldly? There is so much to encounter on our path. It's not going to be a smooth, easy road, but as long as we stick together, we are going to get to where we need to be. It's all about our faith and our strength that is going to get us there. And so, yeah, that's just how I'm going to end the message. Please feel free to drop in the comment section. What spiritual lesson did you take from the movie Temptations? What scene touched you the most? What scene did you take from that movie that correlates with your walk with Christ? Because I got so many from that movie. This video can be way longer, but I don't want to keep y'all for too long. Hopefully y'all got something from this video. Hopefully it helped you in some way. Continue to protect y'all soul and spirit. And I will talk to y'all in the next video.